Hey everybody, and welcome back to Sofox Goes Through the Arduino Starter Kit. Uh, we're on to chapter 12 now, the knock lock. Basically, you make a secret knocking mechanism to keep unwanted guests out of your space. But how is it possible? How does the Arduino detect knocks? The answer is this, the piezoelectric crystal. You've seen this in previous things, experiments, where we use this basically as a speaker. Um, you send electrical signals to it, and it gives out a sound. But it also, much like a motor, works in reverse. It can receive sounds and vibrations and turn them into electrical signals that we can sense. So it's kind of like the motor. You know, we can apply an electrical current to the motor and make it turn, or we can turn the electrical motor and make it generate a current for us. Either way works. The point is, right now we're going to use it as a knocking mechanism, and this is how we're going to do that. So let's uh, first of all get rid of the last experiment with the whole crystal... Uh, ball thing we were doing. Make sure I don't break the LCD display. And let's get right back to it to see what's what'll be needed to uh, set up this knock lock, as the uh, book so eloquently puts it. So to start off with, um, we need to uh, hook the negative from one end to the other. That way, uh, it's. I don't want to be a downer, but this is looking rather negative. Okay, and then we set up uh, three LED lights, a red one, a green one, and a yellow one. This sounds like a traffic light to me, but uh, what do I know, um, except how traffic lights work. Uh, as you can see, um, one side is hooked up to a resistor, which is hooked up to a pin, and the other side is hooked up directly to ground. So, um, we'll, just, uh, we'll just rewire this so it now goes to ground. And uh, yeah, so you can, you're probably already familiar with how, yeah, through all our experiments, you can see how this works. You've got one resistor here. I mean, sorry, not one res. And um, then we've got a green one here. So that one's hooked up. Okay, let me just take this one away. Shorter one goes, shorter pin goes to ground. And, um, yeah, there we are. Damn it. Okay, so negative on this one, negative on all of them. So now I've took them up to resistors that go to two, sorry, yeah, three goes to bottom one, four, and five. Three, four, and five respectively uh, via resistor. Our trusty 220 ohm resistor. As you know, uh, in this package, all of the 220 ohm resistors are blue, despite the fact that that's not actually what they how they are colored in the instructions. In fact, because they're blue, it's five band rather than the other band. So they've got different things, but you know, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that one hooked up. And uh Okay. 
Let's hook up number two as well. Probably gonna have to do a quick test just to make sure that these things are hooked up. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. They go from the pins through the resistors to the top of the LEDs and then down to ground to uh, ground, basically. Okay, what's next? Uh, we've got the piezoelectric thing set up, although I have to be careful because this thing, like I said, they pretend it's much easier to set up than it actually is. Actually, wait, we'll start with the switch at the bottom since that makes more sense. That way I can work around it. Okay, so one end is hooked up to plus, and the other end is hooked up to a zero. Mm -hmm. Just one second. Okay, and the next one, and we've got a, um, I think it's 10 kilo ohm as opposed to 1 mega ohm that so they've included there. So yes, 10 kilo ohm uh, resistor going from the bottom to the negative here. And uh, we've also, this also hooks up the plus on both sides. So I better do that just so we're all clear on that. Okay, we're making some good progress. Now, one end, now how do we hook up the PZO? All right, one is 20 and the other is 24. Remember that, because I can't. Okay, so one of them, uh, the lower one is hooked directly from the PZO to plus. And the other one, okay, this is a bit tricky because it's actually got a, it's got two cables where there's clearly only one port. So, what I can do is reverse this, or maybe not, is there enough space? So the idea is one pin is hooked up both, oh sorry, no, I made a mistake here, damn. This, I thought this was hooked up to AZ, it's actually hooked up to two. Uh, there we are. Now. This needs to be hooked up at the same time that this mega ohm one. So basically this one and this one are on the same line. And the mega ohm one is hooked up to, is it ground or plus? It's definitely ground. So now that these are two hooked up, both the mega ohm one to ground and the uh, and the other end, we have to hook, make a small connection here to, it was 24, wasn't it? Or tw it's 24, 25, hang on. Yeah, 20 and 24. So we hook this up to here so that now they're on the same line. One to 24, and the other two here. Okay, so that should work. The only thing is hooking up 20 to, where did it say 20 is hooked up to? Uh, to plus. Yes, so this is hooked up to negative, this is hooked up to plus.
Okay. Okay, that's good. Next up, we have our capacitor. Now, as you remember, black stripe on the capacitor leads to the uh, black end. So uh, we hook this up here. And if you don't do it the right way, they might explode. Just minor detail. Um, so that's good. Now I've got to hook up this thing here. Now, they want to have it so that like one of them is hooked up to nine. I better get, better get this one hooked up first. Uh -huh. So like one is... Okay, so they want to hook one up to like nine and the plus and minus to their respective poles. The problem is, is that, um, yeah, this doesn't quite work that well using this thing here. So I'm actually going to have to wire this directly myself, which kind of sucks. Well, actually, it isn't too bad. So the 9 will now go directly into the control wire, which is, in this case, the middle. There we are. That goes straight into the middle. Uh, and let's just take this yellow wire into the ground and plug it into the ground side of things and the uh, this orange wire and we'll put this into plus which is surprising hard and put this into the plus side of things okay that should do it that should be our circuits And uh, yeah, that should make sure that this is wired correctly. And there we've got a capacitor. And as you can see from the book, it's nicely laid out. We've got our we've got our piezoelectric crystal set up. We've got all the wires set up. It's now time for the coding part. So um, as always, I might be doing a slight bit of improvising just to make sure I've got everything set up. OK, so here it is. Uh, let's include the servo. So obviously, uh, this is just the pin layouts for everything we've got set up. Okay. And just copy and paste. Yellow, red, green, and switch is an input. Okay, so um, I'm 
Okay, so let's try running what we got so far, just to make sure that I, we haven't completely screwed it. Uh, that you know, it, that it works perfectly fine and everything is happy for all the people in the world. Okay, let's check, make sure it's okay. Make sure it's set up. But I haven't made any embarrassing mistakes. And okay, so right now yellow is showing, but that's because I haven't uploaded it yet. I have now. It's loading and green lit lights up. That's great. Okay, so we know we've already made a good start. Yeah, locked equals false. Switch now equals digital read. Actually, there's one area I haven't quite looked at yet, and that is checking whether the uh, servo is actually working. So I'll set this to 90 and see that if we run this, will the servo actually move? Uh-oh. Is the servo not working? Hang on. See, the servo should be working here. We got this set up. That's a negative. We got negative to negative, definitely. We got positive to positive, definitely. We've got this set up to, oh yeah, of course, I've plugged it once again, I've plugged it into pin eight instead of pin nine. Great. Well, it's good to catch these things now rather than wait for the mistakes to pile up. Uh, okay, still not really doing much. Um, the middle, okay, the yellow is definitely negative, the, the red is definitely going into the positive and the middle one, i.e. 9, is definitely out of control. So this should be working. I don't know why it isn't. Maybe the gear isn't tight enough. Uh, maybe it's already set at 9. Hang on. Oh, heck, give me a sec. Okay, so what am I doing wrong? Could, be, could there be a short circuit? Maybe. Oh, I know a really, really fast and quick way to test whether there's actually power. I'll just put a lead directly across, uh, positive to right, there we are, and this means, this means, yeah, okay, that's bright. That means there's definitely power coming in. The power is definitely going to the red, and the not power is definitely going to the black line. And I'm pretty sure they're connected. And 9 is definitely at 9. So, I don't get it. What's going on? Oh, there we are. I don't know what I was thinking. It moved right there. Maybe I wasn't hearing it well enough. Okay, cool. On to the next one. Okay. Locked if locked equals false. Switch val equals digital if switch val equals high. Oh, actually, there's one other thing we can do to test it out. Oh, well, we'll check it in a second. Uh, locked equals true. Switch val equals high. Locked equals true. Digital right. Green, A, B, low, low, so if you press the button then the box locks and you know if you've got any valuables in it now you can't get at them but of course hopefully not neither from the burglars or whatever so then we need to move on to uh, if locked is true then we need to find ways of unlocking it
Okay, here's where I run something that's against the script. I'm gonna just get the raw value of what the PZO crystal is so that we can sort of get an idea of what value it's meant to be receiving or returning. So let's upload it. Okay, so it's mostly returning zero, but it's jumping up to like Yeah, I don't know. It's That's weird. Uh This PZO isn't giving very good results. It's Oh, now that now the green light's gone off. Green light shouldn't have gone off like that. Is this even on? Okay, I'm re I'm restarting this. Wait, hang on a second. Yeah, I'll re-upload it. This is weird. It's am I, am I, have I got this wired incorrectly? One PZO should go from plus to once to one pin, and then through, then to here, and then it should have a mega ohm to ground, and then also from that same line, it's reading a value that's going straight to analog pin zero. It's not. Screw it. I'll, I'll just follow the instructions and hopefully it'll somehow work. Um, okay, so. Not val equals PZO read. Int number. Oh, yeah, there we are. Int. Than three, and then not uh, greater than zero. If check for knock knock thou equals the true number uh, of our knocks plus plus. So that means it goes up by one. So we check for a knock, and if it is, we go up. Okay, and it's seri serial dot print pre minus number of. I don't know why of uh, knocks. I don't know why that's that three minus thing is there. Oh yeah, serial dot print ln more knocks. Go. So this way uh, it just says how many more knocks to go. So after this, if number of knocks is greater than equal three, equal to three, locked equals false. And my servo, servo dot right to zero. Yeah, so it starts at zero, which is, oh yeah, I gotta switch this back again. It starts at zero, which is open. My servo dot right to zero means it goes to zero. Delay 20, just to be it. Digital right green LED high digital right. Red LED dot low and serial dot print ln box is 
now unlocked. So this basically switches the lights back, you know, previously it's red. Red is, yeah, it goes red when it's locked and green when it's not locked. And now we have to do Boolean check for not this value. And for this case, it said if value is greater, if value is greater than UID and value is less than allowed, OED not. So, in other words, if it's just in the perfect range, then we digital write URL LED. Hi, delay 50, delay a 50, digital right, glow, fail, dot print, valid, knock of value, ln value so that way if it hits that gets a knock in the right value it returns that value Return true otherwise else fail. then we just copy this head except change the values most important change is true to false we add a semicolon here, and we change valid to bad, because it's bad, it's bad, it knows it. Okay, let's give this a go and give it a whirl, and oh yeah, of course, always an extra. Okay, let's take a look and see how this is running. Okay, green, okay, let's take a look. Have to take a look at the serial again. Okay. Okay, this is a bit annoying because it's like <sighs> you see, I went on ahead. I tried to see if I could get it without actually. Yeah. Let's just double check we've got all the connections right here. Yeah, this goes from 24. This is 20, which goes to plus. 24, which goes, which is connected to both a resistor to ground, and 27, which goes to A0. That should be exactly what we're looking for, right? There's piezo electric. One end is connected directly to 5 volts. The other end is connected to A0 and then through a kill uh, through a mega ohm resistor to ground and that does me does look like a mega ohm resistor to me it's got the green it's got the green stripe and everything and it shouldn't matter which way around it is that's and one definitely goes in 20 and one definitely goes in 24 all right i'm just going to have to actually uncomment this so that we get real time view into what the uh, value that the uh, piezo sensor is getting back now because it clearly isn't giving predictable enough feedback in order to make it too useful come on okay so it's just zeros oh See the problem. I have an idea. Um, well, 
we'll move Noctowl up here. Next, we're going to do something clever. We will check if Noctowl does not equal zero, which of course is what it's filling the input with. Only then and only then do we print the Noct value. This way, we get to actually see a bit more about what num level it's jumping up to. So let's take another look at the serial monitor. Okay, so it is... Oh, I know what we're doing wrong. We're not actually locking the damn thing in the first place. Well, that was silly of me. Okay, so it's open right now. We will pretend this is it. And it is open. So let's lock it by pressing this button. And the red light isn't showing, but... Oh, cool. But it works. Um, why is the red light not showing? Yeah, it's definitely five. Five is going to here. And it's red LED high and red LED equals five. So it should be showing. Okay, press the button. Okay, hang a second. I'll just I'll just add it into the very start, rerun the whole thing and see if we get a good result. Meanwhile, I'll I'll cut this off since we don't technically need it anymore. Okay, so it's not it's not giving a red light for some reason. Why not? This is definitely hooked into five. It's definitely a right resistor. It's definitely going to the uh, positive pin, but I don't have the negative pin hooked up properly. Okay, there we are. Just had it on the wrong. There we are. Okay, so let's take out the digital red LED right and let's restart everything from scratch. We'll just add this up here, but we'll just shrink it down ever so slightly so that we can actually focus. Actually, no, we'll, we'll take out the serial monitor here. So, we've got our jewelry box or whatever. Point is that this tiny little motor is somehow responsible for exactly how well it works. Press the button to lock it, and it goes into lock position. But now we need to actually get it back open again. So, here it goes. There we go, more. There we are. Let's reset it back. Oh. Oh, something's going wrong here. Is there a bug in this code? Yep, there's definitely a bug in this code. No, wait, there isn't. I probably just forgot to write something in. Yeah, here's the thing. When it gets unlocked, the server gets written to zero, there's a delay. It says the box is now unlocked, but it does not reset the amount of knocks back to zero again. This is clearly a bug. That's why it's, look, well, it's got a counter saying the number of knocks. But the problem is, because it's got a counter for the number of knocks, after you unlock it the first time, it's set to three permanently, but it's not set, it's set to over three, so it's always unlocked. So what we got to do is find the part where it gets unlocked, which is here, and set the number of locks back to zero. This is, like I said, a bug in the code. In fact, I should just write this in, actually, almost. Mm. Oh. Yeah, there we are. Uh, let's see. Number of locks equal zero. Now with this code added in, it should now work properly. Or at least it should work more, more, work more than once. So let's go again. Lock. Okay, we need to we need to knock it back in. Okay, there we are. Nice. For some reason it's it's on Oops, 
Where does that go again? Um, this is plus, so it goes into plus. Yeah, there we are. Oops, and that's what happens when you exit and short circuit it. Okay, lock. Yeah, there we are. What? Okay. There we are, three knocks. There we are. Open sesame. Okay. So I think I think what I need to do is make one more change. A lot of these things is a uh, a I think the problem is that uh, this is registering a lot higher, so I'm going to change this. For me, a quiet knock will now be about a... Uh, a loud knock will now be about 300, and this will be about 50. That's going to inc that's going to make it a little less sensitive, so that actually it won't keep going off at the drop of the hat. Obviously, you know, season to taste. Perfect! Okay. Ta -ha. Okay, that that more or less works. Okay, maybe maybe if I change it to be less sensitive it'll pick up senses other ways. Give me a sec. I'm gonna try it so that I can actually just hit knock on the door. Hang on. And I need to just put it directly on the hard surface just to make it more sensitive. Okay, first of all, activate it. There we are. Actually, that worked. That really did work. Haha, <laughs> magic. All the power of just hitting hard surfaces and picking up vibrations. Okay, um, it's maybe not 100% perfect, but I'm sure you can do values. And if you look at the uh, book, you can see that they uh, go into a whole load of little more area with about this. It's just you've got a nice little book and a box, and you've got the thing set up. And uh, it counts the number of knocks. Oh, yeah. And you can make more example. You can create more complex knocks, like creating a timer with milliseconds. And then you could, like, do a... And then try to see if you can have it only open up with that. Uh, and also we learned a thing or two about functions, which is pretty neat. So that's been uh, Soapbox, and that's been the uh, that's been our nice little knock lock.